Hey everybody, C Dash here, and we are on the eve of E3. And as I promised, I'm gonna give my thoughts about KOF 15 thus far. I'm gonna go down a couple of key things, tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, what might need work, my overall verdict on the game thus far. Then we'll wrap this all up with what I hope to see this weekend, Evo, whenever else SNK decides to reveal more stuff about the game. Now with all that being said, let's get right into it. What I liked about SNK's promotional tactics with this game is, first off, delaying the release as they did recently. If you want to know more about how I feel about that, I made a video on it not too long ago, so check that out. I liked the swerves that they started to pull on us, especially after the first three trailers since the first three characters were all on the same team. And speaking of swerves, the silhouettes I think are also a pretty cool gimmick. Like both of these things were good for getting more hype on the upcoming trailer or the upcoming announcement, so that was good too. The two for one reveals were actually good too. Like for one, it was something different as opposed to like the single reveal a week. And also number two, I appreciate the fact that they know that certain characters are inseparable throughout their history in this series. More so Ralph and Clark. I mean, Rio and Robert, yeah, but I'm gonna get to that a little bit later. I also really like the gameplay demo that came after they confirmed the Fatal Fury team. Like, I really appreciated that. Like, we had some things still missing, but I still like the fact that we finally got to see the actual pacing and the feel of actual competitive matches in this game. And I mean, the two for one reveals did that too, but I'm gonna get to that momentarily. <laughs> what I didn't like in terms of promotion is they botched the ever loving mess out of this in the beginning. <laughs> on one hand, they announced the pushback at the last minute. And on the other hand, they didn't fully commit to their delay when they should have. Cause that leads into the second thing I didn't like, Shune's trailer, y'all saw this coming. I'm pretty sure you did. See these two things I think are interconnected. I'm guessing maybe there was a split decision at first, there was a bunch of people that thought the trailer wasn't ready, some people thought man we can put it out there and all this, and somehow they acquiesced and put it out there. And I mean, looking at all the trailers we've gotten afterward, it's pretty obvious that the Shune trailer was a rush job. And I mean, this was a big deal because, yeah, I know a lot of people don't like Shune, but he is the face of the game at this point, far as the arc is concerned. He's the main protagonist. In my opinion, if there's any character that you want to look good in any franchises, then it's your central character. It's your protagonist. It's the one that you're trying to make the face of the game. It's already bad enough if you look at KOF 14 promotion, He's a new protagonist, but apparently SNK didn't have that much faith in him because you saw more of Kyo and Iori and other characters than anything. And I'm not a Shune hater. He's alright. Like I said before, he has a cool moveset, a pretty decent playstyle. He's just saddled with a fairly odd design, which I came to understand more after I got that bit of trivia drop on the first episode of The Shattering. Thanks, Shuichi! But yeah, for the face of the current arc, somebody that they're trying to push, they did him dirty. Finally, can we get some more gameplay demos like the one from Terry's trailer, please? And before y'all come at me talking about, oh, but like that's what the two for one trailers did. You already know what I'm probably gonna say. These are trailers. You're trying to sell the characters to people. You're trying to get people hyped for them. How are we supposed to get hype when there's one character that's only getting in 5% of their offense? <laughs> Seriously. Oh, the design. What do I like about the design? Well, for one, in every single trailer that we've gotten, if there's one thing that has been pretty much flawless in my opinion, it's the music. That even includes Shune's trailer. Great song, it's just unfortunately, you know the rest. I always anticipate SNK or whomever putting out the KOF 15 trailer music so we can put it in the playlist. Siren does it all the time for like the playlist we use for the shattering. But yeah, the music all across the board has been great. My favorite track would have to be the Sacred Treasure Trios theme. Love that song. Overall, the visuals in this game are decent. 
Most of the characters returning from 14 look better in 15 if you ask me. Lu Wong, Mary, Iori, and also Shunei's energy fists are a massive improvement in 15 over what was in 14. Like looking back at them now, they look kind of plain almost. <laughs> and the stages for the most part are actually pretty good. I was a little critical in the very first one with the KOF stadium because of how choppy the crowd looked in the back. But when you look at people in the background of like the Pow Pow Cafe, it looks a lot more smoother. So maybe they might improve that across the board, who knows. But aside from the cafe, I like the Sahara Desert with all the Metal Slug references, the concert hall, King's AOF 2 stage, AKA that Five Nights at Freddy's Carnival stage. <laughs> and I like the garden, the hero team stage. I like that one a whole lot too. What I think needs work, and it's really just one thing if you ask me, it's the visual effects on the max modes. It appears in certain instances they're not as noticeable after activation. I wonder if that might have to do with lighting or something because I know when the purple one that we saw, when Clark did it in that trailer, you could totally see it on him. But then in Luong's trailer, it wasn't as noticeable. And I'm sure SNK will fix this up somehow. Maybe there'll be something with the UI to help with it. I'm pretty sure that'll improve with time. You know, there aren't really any characters that have been revealed for this game thus far that I dislike with a passion or I think are boring. Like even though I'll have my mains of course, but I could legit see myself playing around with almost every character here and there just to have some fun. And I've even done that with the Sam Show roster so that's a big plus in my book. I was also really happy to see some returning characters that were not in 14, specifically the band and Chizuru. Earlier on through the reveals, there was something about the reveals that kind of bothered me at first, but I couldn't exactly put it into words. But then I had joined Ignit Rizzi, shout outs to him. During one of his streams, he said something that actually hit the bullseye on what I was trying to get at. He said that he didn't want this game to feel like it was basically 14 with a couple of new characters and a couple of new mechanics. And I totally agree with that. So I know I'm jumping a little bit ahead because I'm not going to get to what I dislike yet, but I do hope SNK continues to put more characters in this game that weren't in the previous game. I also like that the returning newcomers got some new moves. We just saw it with Luong and I love Maiten Kun's new climax super. That was dope. As for what I don't like, there hasn't been a lot of shakeups thus far. Now it's too early to tell, obviously, and this could easily be remedied in later trailers to come. Who knows? The other thing I didn't like was what I felt was a missed opportunity. I think SNK dropped the ball by not leaning into the storyline with Ryo and Marco leaving Southtown. And if you ask me, not making Ryo Mr. Karate 2 right now. I mean, maybe it's a little too early, but come on, how much more you gotta wait? <laughs> I hope SNK knows that we would love to see other Garu characters in KOF other than just Rock. I hope they know that. <laughs> and they have a way to like sprinkle some Garu characters here and there without having to be limited by just a team Garu. And I think this was one opportunity that they had, but for some reason, they didn't take it. Oh well, maybe that'll change. There is plenty of time left. So now the verdict. Has KOF 15 shattered my ex- NO! Ironically, while that no might have sounded very mean, it's not entirely bad. I am still looking forward to this game. I am still looking forward to this game. I am still looking forward to this game. And no, that was not an editor's error. I did that on purpose because a lot of you on YouTube have selective hearing. And obviously I'm not talking about some of you that I talk to on here all the time. Y'all are so awesome. Y'all legit wrote a freaking mini fan fiction during a podcast about a bunch of Nest clones having my name. <laughs> but anyways, back to KOF 15, my expectations are more met than shattered at this point. I'm happy to see a lot of the characters. The game looks okay. 
there's still more that I want to know. And here's where I'll transition into what I hope to see at E3 and beyond. First off, confirm the women fighters team, please. <laughs> I'm not gonna go into that. I think I've talked about this on nearly every single trailer after we got my King and Yuri. But come on, y'all. And I said it before and I'll say it again. I love Alice, but at this point, with the way that they've resisted confirming this team, it can't be her. People will be more upset about that than Shune's trailer, I'll bet. The next thing. If there are any character reveals, it would have to be somebody that is a huge surprise. And I'm talking Ash Crimson, the American sports team, new characters, or just a full team reveal since we've never gotten that before. That'd be cool. Speaking of surprises, maybe we'll see that animated short this weekend. I mean, that'd be dope. They could keep us guessing by throwing some characters in the short that we haven't seen revealed for KOF 15 yet. And on top of that, they can also start putting out info about the storyline. I'd be all for that. Finally, I think this right here is the more probable thing that we might hear about this weekend. And that is information and details about the mechanics and the UI. Because this right here is KOF 15's biggest kept secret even bigger than the women fighters team at this point. But those are just my thoughts. How do you feel about KOF 15 at this point right now? You still hype for it? On the fence? Not really feeling it? Drop a comment, like, share, and subscribe for more videos in the future. This was C Dash, and I will catch y'all later. Take care, be safe out there. See ya.